You know, there are some things, as far as the scripture is concerned, that you've heard so much or you know about, but maybe you have never taken the time to really focus in on what is being said and what it means. And that relates to three verses that we're going to be looking at in Ephesians. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses one through three. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. What do these verses really say? Well, one thing, children. At what point do we get out of this responsibility of obeying our, our parents? Well, that depends, as we will look into a little later on, but in the mind of some parents, we may never have really grown up. There may be signs of rebellion, irresponsibility, and that can present a problem. But yet, in that fact that there is to be this importance of obedience and respect. To obey means to listen and to obey. And in the original, it is the present active imperative. Present tense meaning continual. Not just for one point in time, but it continues on. Imperative means that is what God says. That is what is to be done. And it says, obey your parents in the Lord. So there's a spiritual relationship here in the sense of God has placed the parents in a position of authority over the children. And therefore, they are his re, uh, agents in the family as far as the children are concerned. To honor, to estimate or value at a certain price, to deem or hold as worthy, to count as valuable, to honor and revere. And also this is in the present active imperative. Therefore, it's continual. There's no point in time when that stops. And then also, it is something that is commanded by God. Now let's go and ask some questions concerning these things. First, with obey. Why should you obey? Well, God said to do it. That's enough. Now, I want to say something, by the way, as we relate to this. If there is an abusive situation and that you may be involved with or you know of somebody, then you need to find other help. But we're not talking about an abusive type of situation, okay? Now, the fact that God has placed your parents over you in a specific thing, way as his representatives. If we need to know as children what God's will is, God communicates through, his, through the parents. And it is a way to discover what God wants. Then also the fact that it is right. It's the very nature of God himself. You look at Jesus, and he went back after he had been there at the temple. He went back and was obedient to his parents. Now that is kind of mind-boggling because here you have the creator of the universe, the greatest man to ever live as a human life. And what is he? He's obeying his earthly parents. Now, there's no question his parents were not perfect. But can you imagine God 
in form of Jesus Christ still obeying his parents. There's another thing that uh, Jesus speaks to which helps clarify a little bit, and that's John 15, verse 10. John 15, verse 10 says, If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. So Jesus' focus was to obey his Father, and we are to be obeying Jesus, which falls in line with the fact of obeying our parents. Also, I think it is good to look at the significance that God puts on this. And I want us to go to Deuteronomy 21. Now, this does not relate to what goes on today. All right? But what it does do is give us a picture as to how God feels about our attitude. And that is uh, Deuteronomy 21, verses 18 through 21. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who does not obey his father and mother and will not listen to them when they discipline him, his father and mother shall take hold of him and bring him to the elders at the gate of his town. They shall say to the elders, This son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a profligate and a drunkard. Then all the men of this town shall stone him to death. You must purge the evil from among you. All Israel will hear of it and be afraid. Now, we don't do that today, right? But it does give us a picture of what God's attitude is concerning a rebellious child or someone who is stubborn. And it also gives us an idea as far as age. At least this kid was old enough to get drunk. I don't know about that part. But anyway, it just gives us a little picture into the mind of of God. So, why obey? Because of God's significance of it, because it's right, because of his placing prayers in our lives, because he said so. But there's another thing, and that's because of parents. Now, parents love you, uh, and they know you better than anyone else. And as a result, you obey them. Also, they want to protect you. There are things that they are aware of that you may not see. Problems that exist, but as a child, you're not aware of them. Also, there may be things that they know about that you don't know. So you get upset about something because you're not able to get what you want when your parents know, look, if you just be patient, I've got something even better for you that you don't know about. Also, they may think that it's not the right time for you to get or experience what you desire. And for them to give you what you want would be to reward rebellion. You know, there are times when parents want to do things for their children, but they can't. Why? Because of that rebellious attitude. So you get them what you want, and that just creates more problems. And there may be the need that the parent sees to develop character traits in the child that are blind spots as far as the child is concerned. But also God has his purposes in placing this authority over us. One, to help us learn to obey. 
They lay down guidelines and therefore we become aware of what we're supposed to do and I trust learn to obey. Another thing, to increase our faith, to realize how God can and will work through our parents to guide us. Another, to build a relationship to the parent that will enable them to follow God. Do you know... Uh, I have mentioned to you before that years ago when I was in the United States and pastoring them, I directed camps for an organization. Did this usually two weeks every, every summer. Did it for a number of years. Now, these camps were well equipped. In fact, back in those days, they were probably some of the best equipped camps around. There was a lot to do and a lot of fun. But the thing about this camp is there were rules. And those rules were set up and everybody working with the camp held to them. The counselors, the directors, the, the young people that helped, those were rules that were followed. Now, there's something about a child. And that is, wherever there's a barrier, what is the child going to do? going to hit again. So try to find out, you know, will that move? Well, a lot of parents decide, well, okay, they want to be friends and good, popular with their children, so they move the barrier. And what happens? The child goes after it again. And it's moved once again. When we were young in our ministry, we uh, had in our church a man who worked with the Dallas Police Department with juveniles. And he was sharing about how this happens and that no matter where that line is drawn, the child will beat against it to find out if it was secure. And when it is secure, they are relieved. But they're going to keep fighting until they get to one place that will not move and that will be the police department. And then it's too late. <laughs> and this is true. This is what he was saying as an officer. It would happen. Well, the same thing was true at camp. We had the rules. So what would they do? They would kind of bucket, see if, if the rules could be a little more flexible. And finally, we discovered that the Thursday night of almost every week was the most outstanding night of the camp. That was the beginning of things spiritually. Why? In analyzing it, it was the kids were trying to see where is the line. And when they discovered that we would not give, we would not move that rule, not change it, Finally, they get to the place, well, I guess I'll just accept it and cooperate. And once that attitude of submission to the rules, it was amazing how the attitude of their hearts toward God began to change and how they were then able and willing to submit to his authority in their life. And this is so important to realize. Now, <clears throat> another thing. God knows that the way a teenager responds to his parents' authority will soon be the way in which that teenager will respond to his authority. So as the child is rebellious to the authority in home. Ultimately, when he becomes an adult, he will have that same problem of authority with God. Then I want to ask you some questions about when to obey. Now, you may want to take some notes here. I don't know, because I'm going to move through them. Number one, when you don't want to. 
you obey. When your parents aren't around, you obey. When you think your parents are wrong, you obey. When you know your parents are wrong, you obey. When you think they are unfair, you obey. When you think you shouldn't have to obey them, you do. When other parents don't agree with your parents and about what can be done and not done. When it means that you will miss out on something that you really want to do, you obey. And when you're the only one, everybody else is doing it, but you obey your parents. When you will be laughed at or ridiculed, and uh, when standing in the way of your doing something you feel certain that God wants you to do, but your parents don't agree, you obey. And the fact that when your parents are not Christians, you obey. So now, what do you do in a situation in which you think your parents are wrong? Therefore, how do you handle this? Do you argue, complain, throw fits, whatever? Well, there's a verse of scripture that down through the years I have sought to teach the congregation of Calvary International Church. How many of you know what verse I'm talking about right now? I see those hands. Yeah. And it's Proverbs 21.1. And you need to memorize it. You need to apply it to your life. Because the verse says that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And as the rivers of water, he can turn it in whatever direction he wants. Well, who's the king? the person in the place of authority. And therefore, if you think that your parent is wrong, then pray. And rather than rebel and argue, just go to the Lord. It may be that you say, Lord, if they're wrong, get them. You change them. <clears throat> now, maybe he's not going to change them. But I think this attitude, when you realize that you're supposed to cooperate with your parents, see, this is something you could have had other parents, right? But isn't it true that this is the one thing that you have had no choice about? You didn't get to choose. But God did. And since that is the case, he picked out the parents that he thinks will be used best to handle your development and your plan and the plan that he has for your life. Question. Is God bigger than your parents? <laughs> I ask you, this question, a young man I had counseled before, and he had forgotten about Proverbs 21.1, and I asked him that question. And immediately, without thinking, he says, no, I mean, yes. <laughs> and I think there are a lot of young people that really have that doubt. Now, is God bigger than my parents? Yes, he is. And he can turn that heart if we'll cooperate with the Lord. Now, am I ready to cooperate with him? Am I ready to obey my parents? Am I ready to be respectful to my parents? Not arguing, 
but showing respect to them. But here's another thing that is so vital. Am I willing to accept my responsibilities at home? When there's certain things that are set up that I'm supposed to do, do I do them? Do I do them with a proper attitude? Do I cooperate? Now, if my parents' decision would destroy God's purpose for my life, you think God will change it? Change the decision? Sure. If it's going to jeopardize what God has in mind for you. But if the decision is not changed, then it is more important to God for you to obey your parents than it is to get your own way. I want to make a notation here of something that I feel is vitally important. When a child leaves home with an obedient, respectful, and responsible attitude, he or she is elevated in the mind of the parents to the position of an adult. I'm going to go through that again. When a child leaves home with an obedient, respectful, and responsible attitude, he or she is elevated in the parent's mind to the position of an adult. You see, this is one of the problems that has existed. There are adults that still have this barrier with their, ch with their parents. Why? Because the parent sees the child as still rebellious, you know, disrespectful, and this, you know, until they see that, their attitude with, toward the, the, the adult child will not change. But it may mean to going back to the parents and say, you know, I need to confess to you that I've been rebellious. I was wrong. I've not shown you respect. I was not one to do things as I should have in the, at home, constantly reacting to you. I was wrong. And I want you to forgive me. What happens in the mind of that parent? All of a sudden, that which the parent has been wanting to see for years has come into focus. You know, <clears throat> when I was a sophomore in college, I had a job, I was working, and then I had the opportunity to go out to California. Now, I lived in Oklahoma, and so go out to California, and I was going to be spending the whole summer leading music in evangelistic campaigns. My friend had a car. We were going to be driving out there, and we were from Oregon down to San Diego. But I needed to ask my parents about that. And uh, I didn't know what to think. My parents happened to be visiting there in the college town, and we went out to eat. And I shared with them what I was interested in doing, wondering how they would respond. And I was rather shocked when my father turned to me and said, Bill, if that's what you feel you want to do and God is leading you to do, go right ahead. We're with you. And that moment in my mind, I realized that my parents were accepting me as an adult and was a very significant experience that I had. Honor. We are to honor our father and mother. Why? Again, God's c command. To think that we, he made ten commandments. And the first four relate 
to our relationship with God. The others relate to us and other people. And the first command that he gives in relationship to other people <clears throat> is to honor our mother and our father. That's amazing that God puts that much emphasis on it. That first command in relationship to others. Some Jewish writers think that uh, that may be the most important of the Ten Commandments. I don't know that I would agree with that, but at least in relationship to other people, yes. But you know, it's also a promise that goes along with that. And it's very significant because he says that it will go well with you and that you'd be able to enjoy life put it back there, I think. It's a servant, by the way. So when this is uh, to think that what I do now in relationship to my parents will have a bearing on my life, the longevity, and to be able to enjoy it. And it relates to what my attitude is toward my mother and my father. What about God's attitude? In Deuteronomy 27, 16, he says, Cursed is the man who dishonors his mother or his father. That's a strong statement. A very strong statement. And in Matthew 15, verses 4 through 6, Jesus calls people hypocrites who try to manipulate and uh, do a jetine, you might say, to keep from accepting the responsibility of looking after their parents. He says, you're a hypocrite. Hmm. Well, how do you honor parents? Well, this is to be an inner feeling not just outward conduct. It's more than just doing nice things for them, but the attitude which is communicated behind it is important. You show them love. How? Hmm? By obeying them, if you're a child. And it's interesting that God says, so Jesus in, his, in John he that hath my commandments, he it is that loves me. And he will be loved of my Father, and I will love him and show myself to him. And the obedience to Jesus opens the door to learn more about his greatness and who he really is. And it goes back to even obeying this fact of honoring father and mother by being sensitive to their needs. You may not even realize what some of the needs of your parents may be. By being sensitive to their desires. I had a problem here. It was with my mother. Now, I always like to call my mother mom. Why? I just, I like that. I thought it was good. But she didn't. She preferred to be called mother. Well, the Lord started dealing with me when I was over 40 years of age. And uh, he says, why do you call your mother mom? No, because I want to. I think it's great. Well, what about the fact that she would prefer to be called mother? Well, that's her problem. <laughs> and then the Lord started working on me. Do you mean to say that you can be so insensitive to your mother's desires that you refuse to do a little thing like calling her mother as she desires? Okay, I changed. I started calling her mother. 
It was kind of difficult at first, but oh, I kind of liked it <laughs> after a while. But being sensitive to their desires, to let them know what you are thinking or feeling about what is going on in your life. Another thing, don't be afraid to ask for their advice. Now, you don't have to follow it. No, and you can even say, you know, I don't know that I will follow, but I would just like to hear from your point of experience and wisdom, what would you suggest? And I'd like to evaluate it. And the very fact that you're willing to listen and ask is showing honor to them. Just call to say hello. Doesn't have to be on Father's Day or Mother's Day. You just, hey, thought about you. Thought I'd give you a ring. How you doing? Ask them if there's something that you can do for them. And then do it. If you can. Or find out something that you can do for them. And I think it's also good to ask them how you can pray for them. Because this can open things up. Maybe they're not even a believer. But say, you know, how can I pray for you? And they say, well, you know, they may hum and haw a little bit. I said, no, I, really. Is there anything that is difficult that you're facing right now that I could, could pray for you about and do it right there in their presence? Or do it on the phone while you're talking to them? Be polite to them in their presence. When you're around them, be polite. Show them respect. Now, three verses. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. I don't know what I have shared with you may have struck home. And it may have been something to think, oh, I need to consider this. And I would like for us to just take a few moments in quietness. And you can bow your head and your eyes closed and Say, Lord, what is it of what I've heard today that I need to apply to my life and my relationship to my parents? Let's pray. Father, you know our hearts. You know everything that has gone on in our past. And the th things that we have done, how we have responded to our parents when we were children, teenagers, even now as adults. And Father, I pray that by your Spirit, you will move in and point out some things to us where there may be a need of confession and repentance. God, by your spirit, cause that to happen. And when it means to going to a parent and confessing wrongs, oh God, may you by your spirit lead in that that there might be some ways in which relationships can be restored and love be demonstrated. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.